So this video is going to be about working with imaginary and complex numbers and I'm actually going to come up talk about a lot of different ideas in this one video. So make sure you're taking plenty of notes. Uh, they're just little ideas so you need to sort of make sure that you're keeping up with all of them. First idea is this. Simplifying negative thirds as imaginary numbers. So let's say you've got the square root of negative 25. Well, I can split that and it's always important to split it into a negative one and something else. So I can say that that's the same as um, 25 times negative 1. Now, that uh, root 25, I can pull that root 25 out as just 5. And what I'm left with is the square root of negative 1. And we know from our previous video that the square root of negative 1 is i. So our answer here is 5i. Now, that's all well and good. We've pulled out our square number. But if you had something more like this, square root of um, negative 7. Well, negative 7 is not going to come out easily. So I can rewrite this as the square root of positive 7 times negative 1, which, if you know your third rules, we can say that that's the same as the square root of 7 times the square root of negative 1. Now, the square root of negative 1 is i, so now I have root 7 times i. Okay, so there's a multiply sign in there that we're not putting in there, but that's a, a really basic, really straightforward way of working with i. Um, just the takeaway, break off the negative 1, leave everything else, work with everything else as you normally would, and that negative 1 is going to end up being an i or an i. So that's simplifying negative thirds as imaginary numbers. All right, so this time we're looking at the real and imaginary components of complex numbers. Now, remember, a complex number has a real component and an imaginary component. So I've said the complex number z is this, negative 3 plus 2i. Find this says real z, the real component of z. Well, z is made up of two components, a real component and a negative component. And the real component of this one is here, negative 3. The imaginary component of z is this bit right here. Now, don't write 2i. Just write 2, because if it is an imaginary component, what we're saying is it's 2i's, because that's the definition of an imaginary component. It's got an i in it. So putting an i in here would be superfluous, and it changes the makeup of what we're doing. It would actually no longer be an imaginary number, and I'll explain why a little bit later on. So that's what you're doing. You're looking at the real component. You're looking at the imaginary component of complex numbers. Just really quickly, another way to write that capital R. Another way to write that would be capital RE 4 minus 5i. That says, tell me the real component of that. And the real component of that, that's the real number. That's the imaginary number. So real 4 minus 5i is just 4. Uh, just a different way of asking the same sort of question. This one's really wordy. This has just got some mathematical symbols and we're ready to rock. Just for the sake of completeness and to trick you up, if you were asked to find the imaginary component of the number 10, well, that's like saying, I'll just do it down here, 10 plus 0 i. It's a real number. There is no imaginary component, but don't say no imaginary component. Say the imaginary component is zero. All right, so that's that's how you get away with finding the imaginary component of a real number, and vice versa for like if you're finding the real component of a purely imaginary number. Um, all right, that's good. I was going to cover one more thing in this video. I was going to talk to you about the powers of i, but I get really excited about that. I think it deserves its own video. So that's enough here. Working with imaginary and complex numbers, just a couple of little bits and pieces. Powers of i coming up.